Hello everyone, and welcome to this Diablo 3 Dungeon Guide for the Monk in his Mantra set. We'll be going over how to set up your character, and I'll also explain how to complete both primary dungeon objectives. Keep watching until the end to see a full playthrough of the entire set dungeon with additional tips. To get started, let's first take a look at the set bonuses so we'll know how to gear out our character. This set revolves around the Mystic Ally skill and provides multiple passive buffs from the Mystic Ally runes and Mantra skills. The main damage output for the set comes from the 6-piece set bonus. Each time you deal an attack to an enemy, a Mystic Ally is summoned. The damage of your Mystic Allies is increased for every ally you have out at the same time, and you can have 10 total Mystic Allies summoned at once. When you have several Mystic Allies out at the same time, they can deal a significant amount of damage, so you will probably need to tone down your damage output to be able to complete one of the primary dungeon objectives that requires grouping up enemies. Since the Mystic Allies will do the majority of your damage, you have a bit of freedom in the choice of your damage dealing attack. But note that multiple Mystic Allies can be summoned at one time if you attack with an area of effect skill and hit multiple enemies at once. One of the primary dungeon objectives relies heavily on your ability to frequently cast Mystic Ally throughout the dungeon. Therefore, considering all of this, cooldown reduction and to a lesser degree, spirit generation and resource cost reduction will be the main priorities for the gearing and skill setup. In this setup, we are using five of the six set pieces in the head, torso, hands, waist, and leg slots. In the shoulder slot, we have Lefebvre's Soliloquy, which provides a significant toughness increase when using Cyclone Strike. In the feet slot, we take Ice Climbers, which provides immunity to freeze effects. The elites in this dungeon will occasionally summon Ice Bombs, and if you get frozen by one, you will fail one of the primary dungeon objectives. These boots completely negate the freeze effect, and if you wear them, you won't need to worry about this objective at all. In the wrist slot, we have Pentos Pride, which provides a damage bonus to Wave of Light, which will be our main attack skill in this build. In the main hand slot, we have NGM, which provides significant cooldown reduction after killing elite monsters. This legendary power is extremely helpful in this dungeon that relies heavily on cooldown reduction to complete one of the primary dungeon objectives. In the offhand slot, we take a shield for additional toughness in lieu of damage. There are no overly useful legendary shields, so take anything that doesn't increase damage output too much. In the next slot, we have a Hellfire Amulet. Take any extra passive skill that increases survivability or mobility, but avoid ones that increase damage output. In one of the finger slots, we have Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, which provides some extra cooldown reduction. And in the other finger slot, we have Band of the Rue Chambers, which provides some spirit generation. When it comes to rerolling stats on the gear, the top priority is cooldown reduction, then tweak damage output to a relatively low level, as discussed later in the Dungeon Objective section of this guide. For Kanai's Cube in the weapon slot, we have Messerschmitt's Reaver, which provides cooldown reduction after killing enemies. This legendary power makes the dungeon much easier to complete. It is not recommended to attempt the dungeon without it. In the armor slot, we take Laoric's Crown, which provides additional cooldown reduction with a diamond equipped in the helm. And in the jewelry slot, we have Ring of Royal Grandeur, which allows us to gain the 6-piece set bonus while only having 5 of the 7 set pieces equipped. For gems, we have a diamond in the head slot for cooldown reduction, diamonds in the torso and leg slots for toughness, and an amethyst in the weapon slot. For legendary gems, we have Esoteric Alteration and Mutilation Guard for increased toughness, and Molten Wildebeest Gizzard for life regeneration. For Paragon, the main priorities are movement speed, maximum spirit, cooldown reduction, and resource cost reduction. Next, let's go over the skills. We'll be using Mystic Ally with the Air Ally rune, which is the focal point for the set and mandatory for the dungeon. Next, we have Wave of Light with the Empowered Wave rune, which is our main attack skill for summoning Mystic Allies and helping to kill enemies. Next, we take Cyclone Strike with the Implosion rune to help group up monsters in the dungeon. Then, Dashing Strike with the Quicksilver rune for increased mobility. Then next, we have Way of the Hundred Fists with the Blazing Fist rune, which is our primary spirit generator attack. And then, we take Mantra of Salvation with the Agility rune for increased toughness. For the passive skills, we have Exalted Soul and Chant of resonance, both which provide increased spirit generation, then alacrity for increased attack speed, mainly for increased spirit generation with Way of the Hundred Fists, and lastly we take Beacon of Yar for increased cooldown reduction. Now let's go over the dungeon objectives. The first primary dungeon objective is to cast your Mystic Ally skill on 10 enemies within 10 yards 5 times. This objective is as straightforward as it sounds, but it can be tricky in practice. It can be very difficult to group up monsters in this dungeon due to the narrow passageways. The smaller monsters are also very weak and can be easily killed by your Mystic Ally companions before you even have a chance to get them in a tight group. The first thing you'll want to do is tweak your stats to keep your damage output at a relatively low level. You can do this by unassigning offensive related paragon points, rerolling offensive stats on gear to toughness related stats, or potentially completely removing gear pieces altogether, particularly those that aren't critical for the build, like the amulet, rings, and shield. You'll want low enough damage output to be able to run into a group of monsters and cast Cyclone Strike and the Mystic Ally skill without killing any of the smaller monsters. Since your Mystic Allies, when summoned in groups of 10, will do a significant amount of damage from the 6-piece set bonus, the low damage output shouldn't impede on your ability to kill all the dungeon monsters within the time limit. Once you have the appropriate amount of damage output, then you'll need to focus on how to group up the monsters. 
Whenever your Mystic Ally cooldown is expired, you'll want to run forward through monsters without attacking them, looking for groups of 10 plus enemies. You'll want to look for the smaller beetle monsters in lieu of the slashers. Due to the size of the slashers, it's harder to group them up in a tight pack. You'll need several of the smaller monsters to ensure you get 10 enemies with one hit. As soon as you see a large enough group, you'll stop, cast Cyclone Strike to group them up, and then immediately cast Mystic Ally. Casting Cyclone Strike will hit several enemies, summoning several of your Mystic Allies at once. You'll need to cast Mystic Ally immediately after Cyclone Strike before they have a chance to do damage, and likely kill enemies in your grouping attempt. You'll want to do this overall sequence, running into a group and casting your skills pretty quickly, because any summoned Mystic Ally companions will constantly be attacking monsters near you, and they can do a significant amount of damage and may kill several of the monsters if you're not fast enough. There also won't be a lot of enemies to work with in most of the locations, putting further pressure on you to make quick decisions. Once you cast Mystic Ally, you'll then backtrack to clear out any enemies you previously passed and any others that chase after you as you wait for the Mystic Ally skill to be available again. The base cooldown of Mystic Ally is 30 seconds, so if you don't have a lot of cooldown reduction, then you won't have a lot of chances to use the skill. The Messerschmitt's Reaver Legendary Power and Can Ice Cube has great synergy with this set gear and dungeon. It will significantly reduce the cooldown of Mystic Ally, allowing you to cast it much more frequently, giving you a better chance of completing this dungeon objective and taking some pressure off you to cast Mystic Ally at the perfect time. You also want to back away after you've completed a grouping attempt to allow time for your summoned Mystic Ally companions to despawn. If you charge into a new area with a full force of 10 Mystic Allies, they will obliterate everything in their path, ruining your next grouping attempt. The second primary dungeon objective is to not get frozen for the duration of the dungeon. The large elite monsters spawn ice bombs on the ground that grow larger in size over a few seconds before exploding. All you need to do to achieve this objective is to avoid these ice bombs before they explode. They are relatively easy to avoid, just keep an eye on the ground when near elites. When you're in the middle of a pack of monsters, look out for a blue hue that increases in intensity over a few seconds, indicating ice bombs have been spawned. Kill elites quickly when you see them and sidestep the ice bombs when they're cast. If you're trapped between monsters, then use a charge of dashing strike to get away. Ice Climber's boots completely negate the freeze effect, so if you have them equipped, you won't have to worry about dealing with this objective at all. Next, let's take a look at the dungeon map. This dungeon has a pretty convoluted layout. The best way to think about the map is to break it up into four different zones. You'll want to clear each section before moving on to the successive one. You don't want to have to run back through the map looking for stragglers. The zones shown here are connected by single pathways, which make for good delineators to help you make forward progress. The monster spawn locations are random and will be unique to each dungeon attempt. You can find a grouping of 10 plus enemies anywhere in the dungeon. However, you should aim to put extra focus in these locations. These areas provide a bit more space than other narrow passageways, with more room to pull monsters in with Cyclone Strike. These locations are also connected by multiple pathways, allowing nearby monsters easier access to feed towards you unhindered, giving you a better chance of grouping up at least 10 enemies. As you travel through each zone, you'll mainly be following wherever the monsters are, and you should be constantly glancing at your minimap to keep an eye out for larger groups. Every monster in the dungeon is designated with a skull. You can leverage the following general guidance to help you have a more structured strategy. When you first enter the dungeon, head straight to the first designated location. Try to stay within zone 1 to find your first group. When you see one and get Mystic Ally cast, then backtrack and clear out the rest of the zone. Next, once the Mystic Ally cooldown has expired, head to the next location in Zone 2. If you see a group at this location, then cast Mystic Ally again. Then, you can either backtrack back into Zone 1 to finish clearing it if you didn't already do it, or you can start working toward one of the next locations. You'll want to keep making progress killing monsters. Any idle time you spend just waiting on the Mystic Ally cooldown will be wasted, and you may not have enough time to kill all the enemies in time. Keep repeating this process, forging ahead to find a group, casting Mystic Ally, then backtracking to clear enemies left behind. The first designated location in Zone 4 is a very large area relative to other spots, and normally has plenty of monsters for a single pull, so you'll particularly want to make sure the Mystic Ally skill is available before you head into it. No matter how much you prepare for this dungeon, there is no substitute for doing it yourself, so study the map beforehand and revisit it as needed to help gain some insights as you're trying it out. Most likely, you'll need several attempts before you can complete it, so don't get frustrated and give up, just keep at it. So now that you have the setup and you know how to approach the dungeon, let's head to it. Go to Act 2, then to the Hidden Camp Waypoint. From there, head northeast out of the camp through the portal to Chaldeum Bazaar. Then head into the market area and take a left to get to the portal to the flooded causeway. The dungeon entrance is just around the corner to the right. And next we'll look at the playthrough. For this run, I went with very bare bones gear to demonstrate techniques. Any additional items or stats that you get consistent with the recommendations earlier will give you a much easier time completing the dungeon. Once inside the dungeon, head directly for the first designated pull location in Zone 1 of the dungeon map. 
Avoid attacking anything when you're making a grouping attempt. Any attacks you deal will summon mystic allies, which will start killing monsters uncontrollably. When you see a large group of the smaller beetles, round them up, cast Cyclone Strike, and then immediately cast Mystic Ally. Now, backtrack through Zone 1 and kill off enemies while you wait for your Mystic Allies to dissipate. If you see elite monsters, try to take them down quickly. They hit pretty hard, so try to avoid their frontal melee swings when possible. Let your Mystic Allies tank and kill them so you won't need to stand in melee range, and can sit back and look for Ice Bombs to avoid. When the cooldown on Mystic Ally has expired, wait for your Mystic Allies to despawn before moving forward for your next grouping attempt. Run into Zone 2 to the next designated grouping location. If you see enough enemies, go through your cast sequence. Cyclone Strike, then Mystic Ally. If you see another large group of monsters back to back like this, don't hesitate to kill them off. You won't always be able to wait for your Mystic Ally skill to come off cooldown on every group. Once the cooldown has expired, head to the next designated grouping location and make another grouping attempt. We've now covered all four of the designated pool locations in Zone 2, so it's probably best to just clear it out and head towards Zone 3. Make sure to clear the zone thoroughly. You don't want to leave any enemies behind here. Your Mystic Allies can and will kill everything, so you don't need to focus much on casting your attacks to deal damage. This zone is clear, so head to the next area. With Mystic Ally off cooldown again, run forward through the enemies to the designated pool location in Zone number 3. There weren't enough monsters there for a 10 enemy grouping, but just stay disciplined. Backtrack and clear enemies and wait for the Mystic Ally cooldown to expire again. When you're working on a grouping attempt, be careful using Dashing Strike. Any enemies hit by the skill will summon Mystic Allies, which may kill off monsters before you've had a chance to group them up. With Zone 3 fully cleared, it's time to head into the large area of Zone 4. You'll almost always be able to get a 10 plus enemy grouping at this location, so make sure your Mystic Ally skill is ready. Run in, cast your sequence, kill off enemies, and then back out. We need one more group and it looks like there are several smaller monsters in this stretch, so let's see if we can group up enough. And we did. The first primary dungeon objective is completed. Now we can focus on clearing the remaining enemies while avoiding the ice bombs summoned by the elite monsters. Do not assign a follower for this dungeon. They will just get in the way and interfere with your grouping attempts. This spot is another good location for making a grouping attempt if you need another one. Monsters will really follow you a far distance, so keep an eye on your minimap to help spot any monsters chasing you so you don't inadvertently leave them behind. And we're done. Good luck trying to finish this one. If you enjoyed the guide and would like to see more content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.